This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoltenberg, Camp Power, and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you why I'm not doing a 1000 km challenge with the BYD Dolphin. First of all, I, I caught some flu, or I'm not sure what the heck is going on. So I had some, uh, yeah, I had some sore throat for two days. And then nowadays I have this uh, yellowish snot. So I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm recovering and I have to return the car tomorrow. So hopefully I'm better tomorrow. But uh, I figured out either way, even if I wouldn't be sick, that maybe it's a bit pointless to do 1000 km challenge for almost every car that I've done in the past. Uh, there's also one other reason is that um, we don't have the babysitters. Well, I mean, the in-laws here anymore. So then suddenly I have to hire babysitters and they become a bit expensive because we have to, at least we prefer having them here rather than if you place them somewhere at another home something to do with that kids they're not used to new people and if you introduce new people but also a brand new place they become quite uncomfortable so that's why we're like okay we're gonna bleed a little bit so just to get some events done like the Mercedes event or some of the other events I've been to then okay but for 1000 kilometer challenge especially with a BYD Dolphin it will take Possibly way over 12 hours, so not many babysitters want to sit that long. So that's one problem. I mean, I could discuss a lot about how I could solve this, but for now, okay, uh, I'll just show you. Maybe we don't have to do a 1000 km challenge anyway, because I have good methods of estimating this. So if we look at the result table here, you see that the Auto 3 did in 1140. Initially, it uh, needed 12 hours and 15 minutes. But then I found a way to go faster, mainly because the Auto 3, when you hammer it, it overheated. And this is the same problem with the BYD Dolphin also. So, but at least by going some slower and also I had to do some trick with the HVAC uh, to not steal the AC unit for heating or cooling so that it will do, use that one for cooling the battery instead. I managed to improve the time by a lot. So that this is the, the official result for me after the actual tests. But here we look at the local spreadsheet I have. And then, you know, the result from the 120 kilometers per hour test for Dolphin, you can see that based on the consumption here and the measured battery capacity, it can go 267 kilometers on a single charge. And then I input this in also local copy. I had this also before in the public uh, spreadsheet, but then I clean it up. But you see, you input the 120 range here, which is a pretty good estimation enough. I mean, I'm not cruising at 120 constantly in the, in the 1000 kilometer challenge, but yeah, it's like a good average, a good measurement. And then we have a different state of charge here, and then this is the charging time it takes. And then there's a bunch of calculation here going on about how long you can drive on the full charge, and then, I mean, sorry, how, how far you can drive, how long it takes, uh, the remaining kilometer or something. And then there's a cycle, yeah. When, when you charge it to 40% and then you discharge it to 10%, you will get 80 kilometers of range. And then how long does it take to drive it? And then some total time for the cycle and whatever. And then, so let me see. And then also on top there are some other variables about uh, yeah the distance, total distance, and then how many percent you want to arrive with. So anyway, based on all this stuff here, you see that it will take 11, 30, but I'm not sure if I can always drive only 80 kilometers between the, each charge. Uh, uh, so maybe if I go to around 50% every time, it seems like I can do it in around 11, 40, maybe 11, 35, it depends. Yeah, so this is the estimated time, 11, 35. And also remember that the Auto 3 did it in 11, 40, so it should be on par with each other, right? And if you look at the charging test of the Dolphin, it is more or less the same as the Auto 3. It has the same battery size. It charges the same speed, maximum 86 kilowatt roughly. Uh, but I arrived, let me just skip a little bit back. This is a bit different than the regular charging test, but you see that um, I arrived with 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. It was hot that day. So, well, no, actually not that hot, uh, maybe around 18 degrees Celsius. So at least AC was running for a little bit. And then I did the range test and towards that I hammered it. Well, hammered, you know, 120 kilometers per hour, roughly. Battery heated up, and then when we start charging, you see that 
it heats up because we're taking whopping 86 kilowatt. Yeah, then it heats up, cooling was active. Apparently I couldn't hear it that well, but it was, it must have been active. But then the battery heated up and at 45 degrees, or actually a little bit past 45 degrees Celsius is when it rapid gates. And you will see there, there, well, I think 46, yeah, 46, then suddenly the speed here drops. But then once the speed drops, then it doesn't heat up that much again. So the cooling is able to catch up, catch its breath, you know, kind of. And then suddenly at 45, 44 or something, it goes up to 87 kilowatt, 88 kilowatt, because the voltage is higher now and the current seems to be capped at 200 amp. And then of course, two amps seems to be for running the car's electrical system and maybe cooling. But then after a while again, at the high, so-called high speed, yes, uh, then it hits 46 degrees and again, and then boom. Yeah, so this goes on and on for a couple of times until the state of charge is too high. And then uh, you throttle, yeah, I think this, at this point, you just throttle anyway, and then you just go higher, yeah, uh, until I charge you 90% this time. I see the red line here, this is the Dolphin, and then we have Auto 3, but I think the Auto 3 test, I did wait until it cooled. I, 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 I don't remember what I did, but uh, I started charging when the battery was cooler and then this happened. And you know, we have the BYD blade battery here and the same as we have, or, I mean, similar technology that we use also using the um, Model Y Raver Drive from Giga Berlin. And same thing there is that when you want to have that flat 170 kilowatt uh, until 80% or whatever, well, actually we can, we can do this. You know, you can just do this and we can go to the data range. Yeah. The hot battery, no, the hot battery rapid gated, whereas the cold battery managed to maintain 170 kilowatt until, no, no, my bad, it was, it was around 45%, yeah, and then it had a nice uh, drop. So it seems like it suffered from the same thing down here, that uh, the Dolphin came with 35 to 40 degrees, it rapid gated, cooled out, it went a little bit up and down, and then flat here. But you see, when I did the 1000 kilometer challenge with after 3, I didn't get this, perfect curve. You get this perfect curve on the first session. And then of course, depending on if you slow poke from there on, yeah, you can probably get, still get the perfect curve, but then it doesn't pay off to drive that slow in a 1000 kilometer challenge. You want to hammer it. And as long as you hammer it, you get more like this curve, the red curve. And I think that was, a, that's what I was getting mostly in the up to three. So what I'm saying is that the up to three time 1140, is most likely what I will also get in the Dolphin. And now I'm gonna show you some cool insight that they normally don't see, is that if I go here, this is the, this is the creator side of uh, YouTube. And if I search for 1000 kilometer, and then show all, for example, you can see that uh, lately, uh, how many views did I get on 1000 kilometer challenge? Well, around 30, 40 K, that's pretty good view. Some cars like uh, smart, uh, hashtag three Barabas, got less than 20 K views. But in general, the, the 1000 kilometer, they get okay. Yeah, wow, ID7. So if I go on, for example, the Lexus here, and I look on analytics, you can see how much I made on that video. But then uh, how, how much time did I spend on it? Well, with the, the actual test and some editing and stuff, let's say around 15 hours of work, but then I have also expenses, some food, but some charging. If we look here, okay, so we spend 223 watt hour per kilometer, we have around 56 kilowatt hour net capacity. So if you take this 220 minus 50 ish something, you need to add around 170 kilowatt hour. So 170 kilowatt hour, I do the math here, uh, 170 times the charging price in Sweden for Ionity and Tesla, I think I was mostly charging on those, right? Is around five sec, five nook per kilowatt hour. You see, I spend, yeah, let's say for, for many challenges, I spend around 1000 nook, almost a hundred euros on charging. Or euros or dollars, they are similar. So that means that out of those 270 I would make, I have to spend around hundred dollars on expenses plus food and whatever, and I end up with $170 left. Uh, but then if I also have to hire a babysitter for 12 hours, uh, it's gonna cost me almost around at least a hundred dollars or maybe possibly more. So then 
my profit is mostly just eating them up. Yeah, it was actually quite great to have the in-laws here because they would work for free at least. <laughs> but so you see, so this is the problem that uh, it takes a lot of time. And then for some videos, they don't get that many uh, views or yeah, watch time. Well, let's check some other. And what about uh, the few ones that get lots of views like uh, the ID7? Yeah, let's see what about ID7. Oh, okay, then, then, okay, for ID7, it would definitely be worth it. But you see that in general, I need possibly more than 30K views for it to be, or watch time for it to be worth it, if I have to have high expenses. So eventually, Isabel is going to go to um, uh, the kindergarten from 1st of uh, August. That will probably help big time, but there's always a butt crack because Kindergarten is from Monday to Friday and I do my 1000 km challenges on Saturday because of less traffic, less stau or whatever, less, yeah. Uh, so then uh, I, I could go for a kindergarten run where I could deliver Isabel at the kindergarten around seven-ish, right? That day I want to do 1000 km challenge and then have to come back home and then swap car and then I go for the challenge. But then, as you guys see, it takes more than 10 hours often for many cars. That means that by the time I'm home, plus deductions, detours, delays, I'll be home by five, six, and the kindergarten closes at five. One solution is then to hire someone just to pick up Isabel and then come home and stay home for just a few hours, maybe two, three hours or one to three hours until I am home. So at least we only pay for that little extra time there rather than 10, 12 hours that the, the, the babysitter needs to be here. So that would be a lot better, but it would be on a weekday. And the problem is that I start from yes home here and then I start driving south and I should be here by around eight, nine. Sometimes there could even be some stau going into the city on the morning. Yeah, all the, all the office rats, they're going to Oslo. So I might have to deduct a little bit of stau here, but then I get a pretty clear run over here. And then we have Jungstile here that slows me down by around 20 minutes around both directions. And then I pass by Göteborg, but that should be usually, man? That should be usually around maybe 10, 11, so that's fine. But then I turn around here at Hollandsosten and then I head back again. And then once I'm back, depending on how fast or slow the car is, I'm oh shit, sorry. I might get stuck in Göteborg around two, three in the afternoon. <laughs> and then I get the Göteborg stau. And then back here, but then usually once I pass through Oslo, uh, but then also depends if it's a fast car, then I might get stuck in the Oslo stau, like three, four in the afternoon, right? And then it's pretty bad, man. It could take uh, around Oslo in midday, like now, for example, now it's seven in the morning on a Sunday. You can hammer it from Oslo to Cleavage in around 20, 25 minutes, but during Stau hour, it takes an hour. Yeah. So if I'm not, if I'm not stuck in Stau in Göteborg, I might get stuck, stuck in Stau in Oslo by the time I'm home. And then time is money. So as long as I'm stuck in traffic, then the babysitter needs to wait longer. I have to pay more money. <laughs> well, whatever. It's just something I need to bleed. Uh, and then, okay. And then, I get home. So what I could do either way um, is probably to uh, to just uh, deduct for any stau I encounter. I'm pretty good at deducting or correcting anyway. Uh, what about night runs? Well, the problem is that Isabel, she's two, two years old roughly, and she wakes up at night, but it's more or less random. Uh, it seems like yeah, I actually have, I have her on a, on a baby, uh, baby monitor right now so I can watch what's going on. But uh, normally I would be sleeping in the same bed as her. And as long as daddy is sleeping there, no problem. You know, she will wake up. Sometimes she wants to sleep on my tummy for a bit, for about 15 minutes. And then I move her over to the side again so she can sleep on that side of the bed. And it's fine. It's like, yeah. But then if no one is there, then she will wake up and then she'll be like, oh. and then, okay. And we don't want to have that type of cage bed you know the, that many people use uh, she doesn't like it she doesn't like it at all children are every child every child is different and Isabel doesn't like it and 
So we just have a mattress on the floor and then with some carpets around it. So even if she rolls off the bed, it has never happened before. Uh, she will land softly, but we just put some blankets or whatever in the way so she never rolls off the bed and it's, it works fine. You know, every, like I said, every children, every child is different. But I also heard from Marcus that his three-year-old daughter still wakes up at night and I don't know what he has to do. Like sometimes I can see him when I meet him that he hasn't slept much at all. He's like, you know, he has this. Yeah. And eventually though, children will get a good sleep. They will learn how to control this. And if they wake up, they will be able to fall back to sleep again by themselves. But it's going to take time, hopefully within an, a year or so. Isabel will be able to go to sleep by her own and then also yeah so it's just temporarily but then until then I have to find solutions how to do this there's also one interesting workaround which is that you can hire a woman a babysitter to come and sleep with Isabel yeah it sounds crazy right? I first had this idea and then when I talked to a wifey about possible babysitters turns out that there is a Thai woman who actually does this already. She lives in Roholt and she will do this. Well, I hear crying, but I think that's Axel. Axel is there and Isabel is over there, but I have Isabel here. <laughs> Man, okay, sorry. This is just daddy life. Yeah, and this is parents life. That's just how it is. But, uh, so what, but what I could do is that I could initially put Isabel to sleep and then depending on how tired she is, it will take 15 minutes to half an hour until she falls asleep. Once she falls asleep, daddy will ninja out. This is what I've been doing sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I will ninja out and then we put the babysitter there. So we actually have to pay for the babysitter to sleep. It sounds crazy, but she's not going to get uh, like one, one uh, she's not going to get 10 euros per hour, but let's say a flat rate 500 nook or something right for the inconvenience let's say uh, yeah, 40 50 euros for the sleepover that could work yeah and then I but then I could hammer at night yeah so that was my point then uh, it would be similar to what I did before I could even do this on the weekday there would be less possibility of stau uh, and maybe just one at one point towards the end or some shit and yeah, I will also avoid uh, Ladestau because that's also another problem. Eventually, if Amory's parents would be here still and help me babysit, I would do this, these uh, 1000 kilometer challenges on a Saturday. But once June comes, Jul especially July comes, we will have Ladestau because people will be traveling on vacation. And then at Ionity, Speckerel or somewhere where we have not that many uh, chargers and we don't have supercharger, then I get stuck in Ladestau. So, yeah, maybe uh, there's other solutions. Uh, but then maybe I should make more of these uh, videos like I did initially where I just show you if you have the exact same battery. Like, I'm going to borrow Skoda Enyaq uh, Coupe soon. It has the same battery as the ID4. I tested the same as the uh, Q4. Actually, no, not the... I found that the, the Q4 e-tron battery charges slower than the ID4 battery for some reason. The Q4 e-tron hit 175 kilowatt, ID4 hit 185 kilowatt. So that's why the ID4 was faster than the Q4 e-tron. Plus that the, the ID4 was it was on a warmer run. But um, with the Skoda Enyaq, maybe what I could do is I could just do a, a quick charging test. No, it doesn't have to be a full charging test. It's a quick charging test find out which curve it follows and then I could just apply this this thing on it uh, and estimate how long the Skoda Enyaq will take based on an actual range test that I will do that doesn't take too long and I, even the range test doesn't have to be full either I can just measure uh, how much it consumes on 90 plus 120 that's what I'm doing anyway I don't have to measure the whole battery capacity and then we have a result for the uh, yeah for the 1000 kilometer challenge but of course we won't be able to experience any rapid gate or stuff like that so yeah a long speech but not actual driving unfortunately this time but uh, what do you guys think should we uh, do this for every car or only for cars that has different battery yeah speaking of different battery when it comes to the the next car up now is going to be byd 
seal U, which is like a crossover thing of the seal. And then one week after that one, again, then there will be the, the BYD seal. Seal and seal U, they have different battery, supposedly, than the Auto 3 and the Dolphin. So then it makes sense because those cars, they charge at whopping 150 kilowatt. So then I should do a challenge, but then I have to figure out, do I do it for both of them or just one of them? Yeah. So until then, then I try to recover and watch over little daughter Isabel. So yeah, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.